Hey everyone, I'm Burfi 1322 and this video will showcase the fastest cars in the GTA 5 Sport Classics class, organised first of all by race tier and then by lap time within each tier, with the top speed of each vehicle also shown in order to identify any outliers. All 47 Sports Classic cars have been put through their paces on my testing track and top speed run, and will be going from the slowest O tier cars to the top S tier in this video. Be sure to subscribe and stay up to date on future testing of new vehicles added to GTA 5 and beyond, and check out all other classes in the playlist. This video is brought to you by Bruffy.com support. Head to that link for all sorts of information on how you can support my channel, from links for direct support to referral codes, and even an article on things you can do to help your favourite creators. So as we see the vehicles in the Sports Classics class that aren't usable in regular races, it's important for me to let you know that the intro video to this series, which is linked in the description and pinned comment, likely answers any questions you have about this testing, from simple things like what car upgrades are needed to maximise performance and what HSW stands for, to more complicated things like why I use off-road wheels and overall testing methodologies. Give that video a watch if there's anything you don't understand here since everything there is assumed knowledge for this video. When it comes to the non-raceable vehicles, the GB700W is basically identical to the regular version in performance, and it's a big shame that the Stromberg and Deluxe or can't be used in regular races with their extras disabled obviously, since they'd fit very nicely into the D and C tiers respectively. Probably good that the Toreador can't be used though since it's super fast with that very spammy boost and it's able to get a lap time that rivals the top HSW Super and Sports cars. But now we start the regular raceable tiers once again with tier O, and for this class that's basically the Tornado tier, with four different variants all sharing identical performance now that the Mariachi version can be also be upgraded in an Avenger or MOC. Once again, like with the muscle and sports cars, we're using the tiers all the way down to O, but because there's a lot less cars in sports classics, the size of the tiers will be smaller on average, and the gaps between each individual cars get bigger, at least in comparison to those larger classes that have a lot of cars in close proximity. Sports classics has a wide variety of cars and wide variety of performances, but less to you know spread that around for. So we're going to have some interest. You know, it's a, it's a different setup basically to what we've seen from the two classes previously. And then our future classes are going to be even smaller. Tier N has the better tornado with the tornado custom that we'll see very shortly. But we started off with the POT that is you know decent enough further ahead than the tornadoes to be warranting of being in a different tier. Although it does share exactly the same top speed. That is the same as true of the Manana and the Tornado Custom as well. They basically all have exactly the same top speeds. The Dynasty is up next in with a 1 minute 23.3. So these are some really, really slow lap times, 1 minute 23. But like I said, even though this isn't much quicker than the Tornado, that these cars are definitely quicker enough to be warranting a different tier. So the Tornado Custom does improve for lap time over the regular Tornadoes, but not by much. Tier M basically stands for Tier Manana since it's all alone here in this single car tier and it's the only example of that in this class but it's just a little bit too quick for the N tier cars and way too slow for the two L tier cars, the first of which is the Fagaloa, being a huge 4 seconds per lap quicker than the Manana. However, it does also have the lowest top speed of all cars in the class at only 87 miles per hour. The Fagalora is all about the grip in tier L, but most of the time it's the Tornado Rat Rod that will be the one to pick, unless the track is very corner heavy because it does have a significantly higher top speed, and in general on most tracks it's going to be slightly quicker as well. Now we move on to tier K which consists of three vehicles, with the Roosevelt being the slowest but the most consistent, in stark contrast to the Nebula Turbo which has the awful tow values that some of the muscle cars have, resulting in it sort of weaving all over the place on every bump you hit and giving a very inconsistent and honestly unpleasant driving experience. When you compare the Nebula Turbo to the Roosevelt back to back if you're just driving both of them, it, it's really no contest. Even though the Roosevelt's a little bit down on pace, you don't really want to be driving the Nebula Turbo. But the Frankensteiner at the very top of the tier is hard to maximise and get the most out of, but great fun and probably one of the best sounding engines in the game. With tier J we've got the POT Custom which shines because of its top speed being significantly better and a worthy upgrade over the regular POT by taking it to Benny's, and the Roosevelt Valor which is the opposite and all about the traction. 
The Valor is actually the same as the regular Roosevelt in every way except it gets the extra traction from a spoiler upgrade. Now this is where the Manana Custom would have been too by the way as well, right on the same pace as the other J tier cars if Rockstar hadn't inexplicably put it in the muscle class instead. Tier I is the biggest in the class with 5 cars and one of the closest as well. Now the regular Stinger is a little bit off the pace so it's more of a spice pick while the next vehicle after the Stinger of the Cheborek finds top speed a big challenge but is quite nimble so you know on those tighter more technical tracks it might have a bit of play but just be aware that its top speed is pretty poor compared to the other vehicles that we see here. The Stinger GT up next is the quicker of the two Stingers due to the suspension setup and the tyres can clip flag allowing off-road wheels to give it a smoother ride but they're otherwise identical in stats in terms of top speed and acceleration and things like that. It's also only about one tenth of a second down on our top two for the tier which are themselves only separated by one thousandth of a second. The GT500 is the only car that has the same position for lap time and top speed in the entire class of 25th for each and is probably the best pick most of the time for the tier for most people while the Michelli GT just ahead of it has lots of grip but also has to contend with the horrible engine related advanced flags so it's quite inconsistent and not great in a straight line. From this point on we're going 2x2 two two for a while as the gaps between cars extend quite significantly although just like here in tier H with the Mamba and JB700 there are multiple pairs of cars that complement and balance each other quite well. The JB700 obviously has the better top speed here with a slightly worse lap time while the Mamba has the slightly better lap time but the slightly worse top speed. Next up after these two with tier G are the Corkhead Classic and the Monroe. Now the Monroe has the better lap time and the, the better top speed as well with this tier but the Corkhead Classic is probably the more consistent and certainly a lot better on the brakes. The Monroe is quite difficult to manage on the brakes and, and it, 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 they're both very interesting you know this is sort of the core sport classics class if you like this is where the, the really interesting cars to drive and both of these cars are some of those alongside the F tier cars as well now there's probably an argument to be made for the Monroe and the Coca Classic being in the F tier with the Casco here and as we'll see the 190Z but most of the time the Casco and the 190Z will be you know doing better and, and the, the previous G tier cars will be outmatched. The Casco has the top speed whereas the 190Z has the grip and you know it is quite significantly down on top speed but certain tracks where that grip comes in the 190Z will do quite well and on a balanced circuit it would be quite an interesting race between the grip of the 190Z versus the much better top speed. Speaking of absolute classics and the core of the Sport Classics class Two of them show up now in the E tier which is actually the last of the two car tiers with the Pigali and Z type being separated by only 33 thousandths of a second. Both of them are very competent sports classics and back in the day used to be at the very top of the class, the Z type especially. Now the Z type obviously has the edge on top speed as well and, and remains the highest top speed car in the class that isn't equipped with HSW upgrades while the Pigali has the grip and the acceleration and they're both very close around the lap. The D tier contains three cars which is a welcome change starting with the Retinue which is a full second per lap quicker than the previous Z type but even in the D tier it is more of a spice pick in comparison to the two others. The Zion Classic is 4 tenths of a second ahead of the Retinue but it really struggles for top speed and it, is the, it isn't the best driving experience in the world, it, it's not too bad but and I think given the difficulty of the other cars in this tier the Zion could be a good option for more consistent experience but the top contender for this tier is the Silvestra with the best lap time and top speed in the tier it will be the pick most of the time but it can be a little tricky to handle and maximise so it's certainly possible for the other cars to compete depending on the situation. Okay 4 tiers to go and we start tier C with the big top speed of the Viserys. While it lacks a little for lap time to the other 3 cars in the tier that 4th best in class top speed just behind the Z type and just ahead of the Monroe keeps it competitive especially compared to the two middle cars in the tier of the very annoying to drive due to the stupid engine related advanced flag swinger and the very stiff and somewhat unbalanced in fairness classic. Both of these cars get very similar lap times and are quicker than the Viserys on that front but also are a good 6-7 miles per hour slower than the Viserys for top speed 
to bring an interesting balance to the tier in that way. However, the top car in the C tier has an even better lap time than what we've seen, but also an even worse top speed at the same time with the Sterling GT. It's the first to break into the one minute five second lap time with its great grip, but that 113 mile per hour top speed leaves a lot to be desired and creates an interesting tier from top to bottom where different cars will suit different situations. The B tier takes another leap ahead with three cars that are all separated by less than half a tenth of a second. We start with the Torero which has some really great grip to fly around the corners but lacks a little bit on the top speed front and then only 17 thousandths of a second ahead of that we see the Retinue Mark II. Now this is one of the most susceptible cars in the game to all the little tricks that can be done to make it go quicker like curb boosting, brake boosting, short shifting, things like that. While a good driver utilising all these tricks on a track where it's possible to do so frequently can get the retinue to compete with even A tier cars, flatter or more balanced circuits will bring the retinue back to the B tier. The B tier is finished off with the Rapid GT Classic, another 17 thousandths further ahead than the Retinue Mark II and one of the easiest to manage cars out of the three. With all three of these cars being so close on both lap time and top speed, B tier racers really could get interesting if there's a good variety of all of them racing together. But now it's time for the A tier, which is the top of the class when HSW is turned off or on platforms where that's inaccessible. We take a big leap into the low 104s with the very grippy Ardent starting off a tier that's separated top to bottom by less than half a second for lap time and only 2 miles per hour for top speed. That's some really healthy balance for a tier that is at the very top of the class when you don't consider HSW cars but the main problem is that instead of the top speeds getting worse as the lap times get better, the top speeds also get better. As we see with the Cheetah Classic whose strengths are all about its great braking ability and low speed nimbleness, not only is it a few tenths quicker for lap time over the Ardent, it also has a slightly higher top speed as well. And that pattern continues for our number one car for non-HSW Sports Classics races, the Turismo Classic. The first to dip into the 103s, it also has the slightly better top speed again than the Cheetah, meaning that in most situations the Turismo will always be the quickest. However, the Cheetah and Ardent can certainly compete if you prefer the way they drive. But now it's time for the top two cars, Tier S of the Sport Classics, and it's all about the house special works versions of two cars we've already seen, starting with the Sterling GT, which tops the class for top speed at 156.25 miles per hour, almost 30 miles per hour quicker than the top non-HSW car of the Z type. Its lap time is also more than 3 seconds per lap quicker than the Turismo Classic that we just saw, further demonstrating that in an open sports classic race, when you're not restricting yourself to a set tier, HSW is the way to go. However, the number one car for the entire class is the number one car regardless of whether HSW is turned on or not. The HSW Turismo Classic, while being a little lower on the top speed front than the Sterling, manages to break the one minute barrier for its lap time. That's staggering for a sports classic car and it means that in reality this is the only car you ever need for open sports classic races. Whether HSW is enabled or not, the Turismo Classic will always be at the top spot. And for one of the comparisons here at the end of the video I've decided to put both of the Turismo Classics, basically both of the number one cars in the class, whether HSW, if HSW is turned on and enabled you're going to go for the Turismo Classic, if HSW is turned off you're also going to go for the Turismo Classic and you can see them side by side because obviously the only thing HSW gives a car is an increased straight line speed in terms of acceleration and top speed. It's just the same as it always is when it comes to grip around the corners so it doesn't actually gain that much in the first part of the lap but it certainly gains it in the second part. It's also nice to see the Ardent being freed from its shackles, you know, of not being raceable. It did really well as well to, to stay in that top tier without considering HSW vehicles and I think that makes me justified in my constant badgering of Rockstar for six years to make it raceable. It's a great little car to drive, it's really nice and yeah it's nice that it's also competitive. We sort of now need the Stromberg and the Deluxo to be uh, you know made available to be used in races obviously without all of their flying and, and seafaring capabilities if they were just used as normal cars that you know those are disabled the Stromberg would be it, it's a really nice and smooth driving experience and the Deluxo has quite a unique driving experience and both of them would be 
great additions to the respective tiers that they'd fall into. But yeah, that's sports classics all done, we'll be moving on to coupes next, that's everything for this one. Please consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get some extra perks for doing so, such as early access to videos and other testing results. And also remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.